Hello, this is Miles Luigi. And this is Evil Pop Chat. You may remember us from such Let's Plays as Let's Play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, and Let's Play Super Mario Infinity, Mystery of the Magic Wand. Play the sequel! Shut up, Miles Luigi. <laughs> anyway, I have to comment about World 5-5 of Yoshi's Island DS. Yes. The level is a long cave with an auto-scrolling camera. Let me, let me repeat that. The level is a long cave with an auto-scrolling camera. Boo! The level is a drag to play through, and is one of those levels I never went back to play through on my Nintendo DS. I don't like this level. It's based on a level in the original Yoshi's Island in the exact same member, and even the original Yoshi's Island didn't get this right. Matter of fact, I can easily say this is my second least favorite level in the game. It might be the worst. I haven't made full judgment on that, as we haven't seen the level that I hate the most at this moment. Dun 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 dun! Funny thing is, despite being a slow, auto-scrolling level, it is not easy. 90% of the time you'll be impatiently waiting for the screen to scroll to get to the next section of the level, and 10% of the time you'll be scrambling to collect everything along the way. Wah, wah, wah. The level includes a rock-pushing puzzle that you have very little time to complete. Along in inside that rock-pushing puzzle, you have to throw a well-placed egg in the middle of pushing said rock, and to make matters worse, just before that rock-pushing puzzle, one of the red coins is in a bogus location off where the path slips, so you have to go through both paths while the screen is scrolling. And there's nothing worse than getting to the end of this stupid level after two hours of playing it with 19 red coins because you missed one at that location. RAGE! Yes, this level took me three hours because of that. To finally top off this bad, worm-infested cupcake, if you miss something and reach near the end of the level, you better make sure you commit suicide quick, as if you don't, like I did, you're forced to restart the level. I no longer live in this world. I will kill myself. Ah. Anyway, feel free to skip about 10 minutes after this monologue. I know this level takes approximately 10 minutes. Trust me, you're not missing much. I won't feel sad. Matter of fact, I'll feel better if you just skip past World 5-5. I watched the analytics for this video. Make me proud. Otherwise, for the masochists who wish to stay around with me and my cool commentary there, I have a first. I am going to tell a story throughout this whole level so I can forget it exists anymore. Go get some bacon. It's a long-ass story. Maybe some popcorn. Or even better, popcorn-flavored bacon. Uh, this will actually be a first. This will be Miles Luigi talks about his IT life. This will be episode one. I'm not certain if I'll ever do another episode of this. Anyway, are you ready to start the video? Cue soup opera music. Soap opera music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully you'll be able to help me along with this story of a pop start. Okay. Anyway, three, two, one, play. Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Yoshi's Island DS. This is Miles Luigi. And this is his commentator, the Evil Pop-Tart. I like to pretend World 5-5 doesn't exist, so I'll still tell a story instead. I like stories. What's this uh, story about? I'm curious how many people know that Evil Pop-Tart and R, I, um, we both study information technology. Both of us are very computer savvy. Yes, we do. We are IT people. <laughs> we are IT professionals. As a result, I decided to ignore this level completely, I'm going to tell the story of my first experience using a Linux operating system. Um, anybody who wants to particularly try out Linux or perhaps uses Linux, this story is for you. For everyone else, just listen along, you might learn something. Anyway, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, Linux is a different operating system than Windows, Mac, or whatever in the world your smartphone runs, or whatever the hell else. Um, the term Linux specifically refers to the kernel of um, uh, the operating system, and on top of Linux there could be, like, anything, practically. Um, if you want to install Linux, you basically have to install what is known as a distribution. A anyway, with that little bit of terminology out of the way, let's hop into the story of my first experience with Linux, because it's an interesting one, shall we? Let's! Alright! This was back in the day when I was still in high school. I don't remember my exact age, but I know I could deduce my age if I actually cared to, because I'll be listing um, version numbers for Ubuntu. But anyway, that's not really too important about exactly how old I was. All I remember is this was around the time when I decided computers were what I wanted to do in my life. So, yeah. I forgot the exact circumstances of how I got into this situation, but at some point I saw, I believe it was even a YouTube video, of someone running a desktop um, window manager called Barrel. Um, for those of you who don't know, you probably don't know, um, it's a desktop manager that had a lot of flashy, fancy effects. This window manager did a lot, and I mean a lot of cool things. It made the windows wobble, it made the windows fly all over the place, you could have multiple workspaces, and you could put all those workspaces on a cube. It, it looked really awesome, and if I'm remembering correctly, this was about the time Windows Vista came out, and they are like, oh my gosh, Windows Vista has all these cool graphical effects. And... 
<laughs> Basically, this presentation of Barrel just kicked Vista out of the water with how cool graphically it worked. This was also around the time when um, um, I was significantly more anti-Microsoft than I am now. Um, it's safe to say I hated Microsoft at least five times as much as I do nowadays. I still hate Microsoft, just anywhere, nowhere near as much. <laughs> That's another story, that may be on episode 2. But specifically, the reason why I hated Windows back then is because I always, 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 always had to call Microsoft because of Windows' genuine advantage issues. W which is another story altogether, but anyway, let's get on to my main story. Um, I wanted to um, install Barrel, but in order to install Barrel, you had to have a Linux operating system. So I was kind of forced to have Linux operating system, have all my Windows wobble, and the desktop cube, and all those fancy effects. So, I did my research and learned of a Linux distribution geared towards new people for me called Ubuntu. Um, and for anyone listening, this is still a really good Linux distribution for new users. Um, I'm not going to get into that right now, that's another story altogether. I, I could totally divert into so many different stories here. A anyway, at this time, the newest version of Ubuntu was a 7.04. And what eventually convinced me to finally install Ubuntu and have all these fancy graphical effects on my desktop was learning that I could dual boot between Ubuntu and Windows on the same machine, so I didn't have to give up, I think the game at the time was Call of Duty 4? I, I forgot, but I was hesitant to switch at first, but then I went, oh, you can run both operating systems, not necessarily simultaneously, but on the same computer. That, uh, that, that got me across the edge, so I decided to install Ubuntu, and the installation went just fine. The screen resolution was stuck at 800 by 600, and I thought it was just a graphics card issue. And it will be highly fixed when I install the um, actual correct graphics driver. So I installed Ubuntu, then I installed the proprietary uh, NVIDIA driver, and guess what? I still have a screen resolution of 800 by 600. Yeah. For, for those of you who don't know, that's a really, really small um, screen resolution. 800 by 600 is not a workable screen resolution for me, even on a small monitor. Um, it goes without saying that that screen resolution sucks! My monitor was able to display up to 1600 by 1200, but I didn't even have the choice for 1024 by 768 or the recommended resolution of my monitor of the time of 1280 by 1024. <sighs> So, um, as for everything else, um, I do remember getting everything else working just fine, despite having screen resolution issues, um, it, it wasn't easy to fix, so I decided I'll fix this in a bit, I feel like playing with the other stuff, like installing Barrel, that installed just fine, and I had all the fancy desktop effects, but I still had a crappy screen resolution of 800 by 600 and I've had to spend at least 20 hours of my life trying to figure out why I couldn't change the screen resolution to anything higher than 800 by 600 It drove me bonkers. It made don't no damn sense. Why the hell in this Linux operating system can I not go to a screen resolution bigger than 800 by 600 Ugh. At some point, I found a fix online that made the command line, that is when you go just into a straight command line on a graphical interface, go to a screen resolution higher than 800 by 600. Uh, that, that was nice, but you know, I start up X, I start up GNOME, and guess what, I'm stuck back at 800 by 600! You can't enjoy the wobbly windows in the desktop cube with such a crappy screen resolution, and I'm making this a huge point because it was that damn annoying! It was at this point that I eventually just gave up on Linux because of the screen resolution issue, and I wouldn't return back to it for until uh, the newest version of Ubuntu came out, which was Ubuntu 7.10. Uh, I was hopeful that, you know, maybe they fixed the screen resolution issue, and uh, no, they didn't. <laughs> it was about at this time that uh, that barrel project I was talking about merged with another um, project called Compez, and the ultimate product was called Compez Fusion. I recommend looking into that because that's the current project name. And I decided to reinstall Ubuntu, install Compez Fusion, and guess what? I'm still stuck at 800 by 600. Bleh. Anyway, by by some miracle, I don't know exactly how I figured this out, but by some miracle, I managed to find something that works. There, there is one option you can pass in xorg.config, that's an X configuration file, that magically, ma I mean magically, just fixes the issue. And, and I'm probably going to link it in the description if I can remember, but uh, it's in the screen section. You pass an option called ignore edid. A adding this option just causes the X server to ignore what I guess EDID says and instead trust the X or config instead of EDID. And now I can change to 1024 by 768 or one of the other resolutions. Oh my gosh. I was ecstatic. I was incredibly happy. I can finally enjoy this really graphically 
horribly graphically intense desktop environment. <laughs> I, I had everything enabled. All the animations, all the wobbly windows, the desktop cube, everything. It was probably impractical because of all the crap I had made. But I was so happy. I was really, really happy. Oh my gosh. I, for like the next month or two, I tried only using Ubuntu because I, I had wobbly windows, I had the desktop cube, I had everything, and it was just so fun. Uh, the, the lesson here is, uh, first, anyone who is interested in the IT field, um, you should learn Linux just because it's very commonly used in the IT field. Just take it from my own personal experience from what I've gone through. And uh, the other lesson is uh, for anyone who currently supports Linux, if you happen to be listening to this, the Compass Fusion plugin or Compass Fusion package is uh, one you should support because it gets people like me who are just interested in the desktop cube and the wobbly windows all interested. And, and trust me, that makes people happy even though it's a complete waste of resources to have the windows all wobble all over the place. <laughs> and while I personally think those stupid wobbly windows are really distracting now, th they were fun at the time. Eye candy pleases people, and it's what made me got to use it for the first time. Uh, anyway, you a pop turd. Do you have anything else to add to that? I'm gonna go all, uh... What the hell's that character's name from Family Guy? Buzz Killington! Ah, uh, yes! Good old Buzz Killington. Yeah. Back in my day, his name was Linus Traveled. That's why Linux is called Linux. Cause it's named after Linus Traveled. <laughs> he invented the Linux operating system. It was Unix based at the time. Yeah, I got nothing. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, for real. But uh, my my Linux experience was a little different. Um. Uh, I started roughly playing around with uh, a distribution called Red Hat. Um, I'm more familiar with Red Hat than, let's say, mostly any other distribution of Linux, uh, to some degree. Uh, I haven't played with Red Hat in a long, long time since at least uh, I, I ran uh, some Medal of Honor game servers and, and stuff like that and was playing around, but I am not much of a Linux head. I I'm only started recently started playing with Linux when I got out of uh, got out of college with my two year and really started playing with it, sitting down with it. And eventually I just got frustrated because anything I could do with Linux I could do in Windows anyway. It, it really didn't give me a reason <laughs> to run a Linux distribution. I wasn't doing anything fancy with it. I wasn't running no goddamn cube. I didn't care. <laughs> I wanted performance. I couldn't run any games on it. And the Linux games, some of them were shit. Some of them, eh, they were good. They were fun. Um, but, uh, no, I, I want to I wanna play some games on it. Um, Alright, thank God, World 5-5 is over, and we're now at World 5-6, find the number ball. We, we, we made it! It's gone! World 5-5, I will never have to go to ever, ever again. Yay! Anyway, uh, why don't you finish up this story if you just want to quickly wrap it up. Just, just as a minor quick guy, I've just now started playing with Linux, and... Around with it. I mean, if you're looking for a Linux to go for, go with Mint. It's basically Ubuntu with all the packages that you don't have to fuck around and install with. Agreed. Agreed. Look for Linux Mint. Yeah, just look for Mint. Get Mint. It's fucked up. Anyway, okay, okay, back on track. Back on track with our regular Yoshi's Island DS commentary. This level's a little tricky. It's filled with a lot of lava. Well, I did like the background in the one cave, and I'm, I'm starting to like how the lava looks now. It doesn't look like fucking pools of lake. You'll like a later background, I think. Anyway, the boulder up top, you notice that I had to run underneath to get uh, to some coins. If you don't do that, you miss out on some items and you can't 100 do level. Anyway, this level shortly on becomes a little bit like a maze when you first get to it. It really isn't like a maze, it's actually very limiting, but it'll feel like a maze first time you get to it in the game. There are four number, number balls we have to collect. Three of them are really easy to collect and one's a pain in the ass to collect. <coughs> It's at this point, I think it's a really good thing Yoshi is wearing a Vario suit, as we will very shortly see in this next area, after the number balls. Wait, Yoshi doesn't melt in a Navaria Yoshi suit. does not melt. He has to be wearing a Vario suit, just look at this area we're about to enter. Even though he's made out of Play-Doh and putty? Mm-hmm. Oh, great, we're in a volcano. Exactly. With gold. <laughs> he would be melted alive here if he wasn't wearing a Vario suit. <laughs> Wow, what the hell? Playing Yoshi. Okay. Strange. Thought we were playing Yoshi Pinball for a minute. Yeah, 
throw an egg at that thing. Um, I don't think I really have to reiterate that lava kills you instantly, but it does. Oh, it's <laughs> lava. To just throwing that out there. It's lava. Just... Mm-hmm. Anyway. I'm wondering how we got here. Well, if you remember, we climbed up a mountain, it was really snowy, and then we met a bunch of travel shy guys, and we're heading toward the Bowser's castle at the moment, and we're in a volcano. You know, it, it all makes sense that we're in a super hot area where we are not dying instantly because we got the Varia suit power up. No, this does not make sense at all. That makes absolutely zero freaking sense. Uh, it, it's not just hot in here, but it's hard to breathe in Volcano. Well, it's because of all the sulfur. Exactly. The sulfur can kill you. So why are we collecting pool billiard balls again? Well, they unlock the uh, end of the level. Oh. And they act kind of like keys. Ew. Mm -hmm. And that four ball, as you saw over there, was over by the flowing lava, and that flowing lava does not stop for until you stop it. And in stopping that, that makes this... It makes it the hardest to collect a billiard ball. And anyway, as for here, we need to uh, get Yoshi with um, uh, Baby Donkey Kong over to the side, but there's some additional stuff to grab with um, Baby Mario underneath the ledges. Of course, I'm a major klutz. I fall off a ledge, which means we have to run all the way around. Flutter! Flutter, my Yoshi! Flutter! Oh. There we go. Yeah, see, there's a couple of red coins underneath there, and looks like we have to go all the way around again. That was a nice glitch. There we go. Now we can actually get ahead of here. I actually had a pretty miraculous uh, save here at one point, but it was sadly one of my deaths. So... Exactly. Anyway, what better way to transition from a... Oh, not quite yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. What better way to transition from an incredibly hot uh, area to a nice cool cave with ice? Ice, baby, ice. Yeah. The, the temperatures in here are so sporadic, there ought to be a weather system in here. <laughs> I'm surprised it doesn't get foggy. <laughs> uh, my thoughts exactly. Anyway, up ahead is a little bit of an annoying setup. Uh, y you have to get the key here. This is where you um, get the actual, actual key, not the billiard balls. And uh, The key is an area you're not able to access yourself. Instead, you have to knock it to an area where you can access it. Oh, joy. Game mechanics for the win. Mm -hmm. First off, me, get that floor, please. Thank you. Alright, so the key is to my right. Okay, pan to the right camera past me. I I'm talking to my past self. Hurry up! Come on! There we go. So, y you gotta hit the bubble cloud, which will release the key. Now, watch what happens to Miles Luigi. First off, I ran out of eggs. But the idea is, you know, you knock the key and then it just falls down. And that's what normally happens. And this time, for some reason, the key stopped on the flippers. Son of a... Oh, son of a... My thoughts exactly. I don't know why. It should have just fell. Anyway. We got three of the four billiard balls. Now, that's where we kind of got to go all the way to get that four. Yes, do not throw the billiard balls, please. <laughs> there is a... First off, you're not allowed to hit the billiard balls. You have to hit the cue ball. And second off, there's no hole to knock them into. This is true. Mm -hmm. Now, now, if there was a cue ball, it matters a little different. But we would still need uh, pockets to shoot them into. And sticks. Very long sticks. Yeah, very long sticks. Knowing my luck, I'll hit the 8 ball in immediately in a game of billiards. I I'm not very good at billiards. It's in the middle of the freaking balls. You know how hard it is to sink an 8 ball on your first shot? It's pretty hard. I I honestly don't play enough billiards to know. I do know the couple of the quirks of the game, like aiming at the diamonds, but... Um, it's got geometry! It's all geometry! Exactly! You're exactly! That's geometry. part of it, I like. You'd be awesome at billiards. Yes, I would. If I actually practice. That's the, that's the thing. I don't have any practice. We will take you out to a bar and practice. Okay, then. Do we know All the lights came out now. What was with that? Well, you kill all the piranha plants, uh, uh, 
So when do piranha plants block light? Uh, we de-rooted them and underneath their roots were some lights. That makes a lot of sense. What are you doing right here? Well, as you can see there's a lot of fire bars in the way. You gotta go all the way you gotta... up. Yep. All the way up is the switch to turn off the lava stream, which will finally allow us to get the four ball. Oh god. And as you can see, the fireballers are quite deadly. They are not one-hit KO, though. The lava is. <laughs> so, by the way, if, if you get knocked from your invincibility frames into the lava, you'll still die. So don't think invincibility frames will save you from lava death. It, it's not like Mega Man, where, you know, you get hit, you can walk on spikes. No, you get hit, you die. You still die. Do you not pass die. go, do not collect $200, go straight to jail and die. Mm-hmm. Two deaths. <laughs> And those deaths were really stupid. I'm just gonna say that right now for my memory. Anyway, we're about to come up to probably the two stupidest red coins in World 5. Oh, joy. Mm hmm. So, first off, I'm gonna set off that uh, nice contraption up here. If I can. Okay, I guess I'm trying to hit the checkerboard platform for here, but that thing up there. Thank God I fast forwarded it. Alright, so up ahead we're gonna run on... Well, first off, we're gonna collect the four ball, and then we're gonna drop down below to collect some goodies. Two of the red coins are located right on the top of the surface of lava, but with the way the camera is positioned, you can see the red coins and not notice that they're right below the lava, right there. I, I don't exactly show it greatly there, but it is very easy to just... Matter of fact, I think I did this once. Just hop on down there nonchalantly, you know, oh, there's the red coins, and then just die because you landed right into some lava. <laughs> Uh, the, the camera is not your friend here. Matter of fact, uh, the camera in these last four worlds, they, they just didn't care too much about that blind spot in the middle anymore. They're just like, fuck it. Fuck it. We're gonna hide stuff there, matter of fact. Three fucks were not given during the making of this level. Alright. Well, let's sink this four ball. Who the hell would lock a door with cue balls, or anyway? Or billiard balls. Sorry, not cue balls. <laughs> billiard balls. Oh, God. Now I'm trying to think of a really clever answer to that, and I just don't have one. I would not use billiard balls as keys. <laughs> and that does really sound like a dumb idea, because billiard balls, their shape and texture are really easy to uh, acquire. Billiard balls are mass-produced, so they're inexpensive. Exactly. So if you're going to protect your house with billiard balls, y your friend just has to go to the store, buy some billiard balls, and he can unlock your house. Goal! Goal. <laughs> Sorry, mixing it up. Oh, we need to mix it up anyway. We are going to head on over to World 5-7 after Scratch and Match. Scratch my bacon. No bacon strips here. Don't you feel like you're playing a scratch and sniff when you do this? Like, oh, scratch and sniff. <laughs> I don't smell anything. Well, you did smell baby diaper, and right there you smell the bird, bird stuff, and I'm sure. The baby diaper smell is worth two up. Yep. All right. So, off to World 5-7. I got a note that apparently I'm supposed to be super angry at World 5-7. I am not angry at World 5-7. Yes, it's a challenging level, but it is not challenging in a rage-inducing hard. It is super hard acrobatics. It is a hard level. If you wanted platforming goodness, this is the platformer's level. I got nothing for that. Okay, I'll just have to watch. There's a lot of gusties. I see gusties. There are plenty of gusties, but yes, this level is probably the most uh, platforming heavy in the game. Nice fluttering, nice jumping. That's all here. Um, and there's some red coins hitting down there. Curse those red coins being hidden down there. A anyway, other than those um, red coins hidden down there, there isn't too much in the way of dicking you over this level except for one other red coin that I'll point out when we get to it. But it really sucks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I see a shy guy with a freaking pur purple sail? Really? Yes, you did. Really? <laughs> they appeared in the first world. Oh, they, did. They, they did. They yes, didn't they have did. purples, purple umbrellas. <laughs> Maybe they didn't have purple umbrellas, but I can tell you that they definitely appeared in the first world. 
Anyway, are you ready to see Miles Luigi fail at aiming? Yes, fail. Hardcorely. I hit the platform, I missed the pot, I missed the pot again, and I missed the pot again! <laughs> <laughs> wow! The best part about it is there's a red coin right underneath there, so I have to take that hit in order to collect the red, red coin now. How about that? Oh. Isn't that nice? Darn. Duck, duck, goose. Duck, 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 duck. God damn it, you said goose already! Duck, 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 duck. Don't you hate that? It's like they say duck like 20 times, and then they say, okay, just say goose already. Seriously, pick somebody. Duck, 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 duck,